Hello, Florida. Thank you for joining this virtual town hall meeting. And a big shout out to Sandy. I miss seeing you. While the pandemic has caused devastation across America, especially throughout the art sector, meeting together like this is more important than ever. In 2019, between staff and myself, we visited all 50 states. And if not for the pandemic this year, we would have done the same. But we'll get back out there when the time is right. Until then, this town hall meeting is a terrific forum for us to stay connected. So thank you again for joining us today. Josh, take it away. My name is Josh Mothy. I'm with the National Endowment for the Arts. And a little information about the, the Arts Endowment. Uh, we were established in 1965 and it was by President Lyndon B. Johnson. We're an independent federal agency and we're the only arts funder in America, public or private, that supports the arts in all 50 states, U.S. territories, and the 435 congressional districts. Now, I know that everybody has a mission or vision statement, like most um, departments, agencies, or companies, we also have a mission and vision statement. But our, our chairman, Marianne Carter, um, she has picked out like two pieces from those mission uh, statement and vision statements that she finds to be the most priority for us to do at the Arts Endowment. And that is access to the arts and access to the agency. Those are her main priorities. Which brings us to COVID-19 and the impact. Obviously COVID-19 was a global pandemic, um, but it hit hard here at home in the United States with the arts, entertainment and recreation sector. Um, in March through April of 2020, um, arts and entertainment and recreations jobs fell between from 2.4 million jobs to 1.1 million jobs, which is a, a loss of 54.1%. That's a huge loss. So we, we obviously had job loss, we had economic loss, and we um, also did a national survey of art organizations during this time to see how they were recovering, what the recovery plan was, um, if we could offer any help, um, and just to collaborate to get through this difficult time. The CARES Act. Um, we were very fortunate uh, that Congress appropriated um, $75 million in the CARES Act to the National Endowment for the Arts. $30 million of that went directly to the states and regions. And I want to point out that in 18 days after the president signed this into law, that $30 million was out the door and into the hands of the states and regions. That was a very quick turnaround. Um, our staff worked very long hours to get that done because we wanted to get make sure that that money got out to you guys um, and to help. Um, $45 million of it went directly to art organizations through grants. We were able to grant 855 direct grants that were awarded by July 1st, and these grants were designated to save jobs. That was our main priority was saving jobs, keeping the lights on, and um, keeping jobs going. This is a map of our state and regional partnerships. We have partnership agreements with the 50 designated state art agencies, US territories, and the six regional art organizations. The color coding on this map indicates the states with their art, their regional art organization. And when Congress passes, um, the budget for the year for the country, and we receive our portion of that budget, 40% by law has to go out the door to the states and regions. So we get that money out as well. 40% of our total budget goes out to you guys. This is um, a slide showing our 15 art disciplines that we offer with the National Endowment for the Arts you would go to arts.gov, um, our website, and you would find the artistic field tab, which um, in the dropdown of that would list all of these um, 15 art disciplines that you can choose from to apply for a grant. 
I also want to point out that on our website, arts.gov, um, you can go to the search engine and type in uh, 2020 guide. So when you find that on the website, 2020 guide, it's a PDF file and it's a, it's a, a great guide about the agency and tells different stories. But for me on page 20 and 21 is the most important for me because that lists out all of these 15 disciplines. It gives the contact name, phone number, and email for you to reach out if you have any questions. Right now, I would say email is probably the best way to reach out because I know that I tried to uh, forward my phone from my desk to my cell phone and that didn't work. Um, so I'm still receiving phone calls back at the office and hoping that people will just email me. So I would say email is the best way to get in touch. We have very knowledgeable, skilled people within these fields. So call us and ask us questions. And if you um, are calling about an art discipline that you wanna maybe sign up for and, and apply for a grant, let's say like in dance, um, and you uh, call our um, agency and you're talking to the discipline director or staff member, and they feel that you possibly fit better into, let's say, musical theater. They'll forward you over to the next person in the musical theater, and then you'll just start the process of the application process, asking them questions and getting their knowledge on the uh, overall uh, field and um, the application process. So once you applied for a grant, it goes through three levels um, for the grant applications. The first one is level one, and that's your peer review. So once you figure, um, once you filled out your application, you go through a peer review um, that goes over and reads all of the different um, applications. There's about 30 to 40 applications um, per panel. Each panel has five to six people on it. These people, um, these panelists are, um, someone is, they're all, working in the arts, but there's one lay person and that person is knowledgeable in the arts, but does not make a living from the arts. So there's five to six people. They're made up of, of gender, ethnicity, a wide variety of expertise. So we have a great span of knowledge on these different panels. So once those uh, applications are reviewed by the panelists, they go to uh, our National Council on the Arts and the National Council on the Arts votes um, on the recommendations from the panelists for grants and the chairman signs off on them. And the chairman signs off on the, that, that's the last level. So basically uh, he or she, the chairman, gets um, the recommendations from the council and the panelists and then she, he or she signs off on the grants to be sent out. Uh, below, you'll see a link, uh, become a panelist. Um, this is a great way, if you want to become a panelist, um, to get knowledge on uh, the agency, what, what the application process looks like, what panelists are looking for in an application, what makes a good application, what makes a not so good application. Um, so becoming a panelist is also very helpful towards the future of you, of your organization, if you're wanting to apply for a grant. So I suggest if you would like to become a panelist, to go to this link and fill out, it's a very quick, simple form. And if you want to, you can also email me that you filled out this form and then I'll send your name um, off to the correct department. Um, but uh, yeah, this is a great thing to do as far as um, getting to know the application process. So we have three categories. We have grants for arts projects. And if you are familiar with the arts endowment from years ago, grants for arts projects used to be called artworks, but we've changed it from artworks to grants for art projects. We have our town and we have research. These are our largest grants that we fund to the nonprofit organizations and they receive the bulk of our direct funding through these three categories. The first category is grants for art projects. Uh, these grants are typically made around, two, there's around 2,000 um, grants per cycle 
that are made throughout the U.S. You must have a three-year art history programming to be eligible to apply for a grant. You must also have a one-to-one -one non federal cost match to apply for the grant. Um, and these plant, uh, grants um, include funding for creation, presentation, exhibition, education, and services to the field. There's two application um, deadlines, uh, one in February and one in July. You can only pick one of those months to apply for a grant. Um, you can't apply in February and then again in July. You have to do it either one in February or one in July. And these grants range from $10,000 to $100,000. And we fund um, large and small projects, new and existing projects, and projects all over the 50 United States, uh, Washington, D.C., and our U.S. territories. So our town is our creative placemaking grants program. This grant supports projects that integrate arts, culture, and design activities into efforts that strengthen the communities by advancing local, economic, physical, and social outcomes. Uh, uh, these are partnerships between uh, the local government and our nonprofits. So this is a great um, way to, I guess, jump, if you wanted to jumpstart um, a, a portion of your town that might be hurting economically, physically, um, you want to bring back its, its, um, its luster. So you would apply for an R Town grant to um, spruce it up and make it something that everybody can enjoy and, and come to gather and, and maybe even have like markets or um, concerts, things like that. So the next one is our research. Our research um, grants support um, research that investigates the value and or impact of the arts. And we also have um, the Arts Endowment publishes research uh, materials that analysis on topics affecting arts and art artists and art organizations. And they have a deadline in March. So most of our um, grant applications just have one deadline, obviously. But that, that first one, the um, grants for our projects, you have two chances um, to fill out an application for, but you can only do it one time, where the rest of them all just have one month per year that you can apply for it. And this one for research is in March. Some eligibility requirements um, to apply for a grant, you must have a DUNS number. Uh, you must be registered with grants.gov and sams.gov. You must have a three-year art history programming to be eligible, like I mentioned, and also that one-to-one -one non federal cost match. And generally, it's one application per organization per year. Organizations that we fund, um, here's a, a, a list of a few that we have. We obviously um, want you to be a nonprofit, tax-exempt 501c3 organization. And we also do school districts. Um, we do local government agencies, nonprofit educational institutions, such as historically black colleges and universities, tribal colleges and universities, and Hispanic serving institutions. Those are some organizations that we do fund. Funding may not be used for general operating support or seasonal support. Um, that did change when we had the CARES Act. Um, Congress did uh, waive that uh, guideline and because we wanted to save jobs. So you were able to use your CARES Act grants if you received that for general operating support or seasonal support. But typically throughout the year when you're applying for a grant, you can't use the grant money for general operating support or seasonal support. We also don't fund the creation of new organizations or the facility construction purchase or renovation. We can um, fund the design portion of that, of the facility, um, but we cannot actually 
give a grant for the facility construction, the purchase of a facility or the renovation of a facility, but we can do the design portion of it, which is one of our 15 art disciplines. And uh, we, we uh, do not, uh, we do not fund individual, individual schools. Um, we do school districts, but not individual schools. Some helpful hints um, when you're applying for a grant is to complete your grants.gov and stamps.gov registration. Um, you may have already registered with them. Just make sure that your registration is current so that you don't have to go through that process again. I know that um, our application process is pretty daunting and so is this grants.gov and stamps.gov. So we don't want you to um, have to go through all of this mundane filling out of forms. So um, just make sure that your grants.gov and stamp.gov uh, registrations are current. Um, contact our staff with questions. Again, access to our agency. We wanna help you, we're there to help you. So if you, usually within uh, two days of an email out to our staff, they have a response back to you. And if you call them, you can leave a voicemail obviously and I'll return your phone call. But our main priority is access to our, our agency and we want to help you. Um, ask a friend to proofread for typos and clarity of your application. I know that we've all been there. We've done some, uh, we've worked on documents and you just think that everything, the grammar and everything's um, good, um, but just have someone read over it to look for punctuation and clarity and see if it comes across to them the way you want this project to be um, in the end. And then also tell a story, why this project, why now, and what will result or change as a result. Okay, next. Uh, this is a screenshot of our, um, our website. Um, this, I took this one from last month's um, scrolling um, screenshots from the, the website because we um, celebrated the 100th anniversary of the women's suffrage movement. And the Arts Endowment created a book, um, Creativity and Persistence, Art That Fueled the Fight for Women's Suffrage. Um, it's a great book and, and I just wanted to point that out to um, all of those pioneers um, from before that helped out our um, women's suffrage and women's movement and the continuation of that. Um, so you would go to our website and you see these different um, tabs that are listed here. And if you wanna apply for a grant, you would go to the grants tab and in the drop down, you would find apply for a grant and you would hit uh, apply for a grant and go through the process of applying for the grants. Some initiatives that we have with the Arts Endowment, uh, we have the Creative Forces, which is um, for our military. We use arts therapy to um, help our wounded soldiers with PTSD or um, traumatic brain injuries. Uh, we also have Big Read, which is kind of like a big book club that we have. Um, we have Blue Star Museums, which uh, gives um, free access to museums across the country. There's about 2000 museums that take part in this for our active military uh, members and their immediate families. We also have Shakespeare in American communities which is where professional artists, um, actors go into middle high schools, middle schools and high schools um, to teach Shakespeare and have educational activities. <laughs> we have uh, Poetry Out Loud, which is one of my favorites. And that's a, a, a poetry recitation competition. The finals are in Washington, DC and each state sends their state winner to Washington, DC to compete in the finals. Arts and our economy. When we were doing so well with arts in the economy, it made up about $877.8 billion of the economy, which is 4.5% of the nation's GDP, which just goes to show how 
impactful the um, arts are. And then if you move over here to the right, this is um, a little a study in March and April on the onset of the pandemic. And it shows that um, between March and April of this year, the arts, entertainment, and recreation lost, um, jo jo lost jobs in the industry of 42.4%. So it's second to the accommodations and food services. So it just, again, goes to show how impactful the arts, entertainment, and recreation portions of our economy um, works in our nation. So we just, um, I'm hopeful and, and I hope that we get back to, to normal again so we can open up these theaters and get back to business as normal. Um, this last slide is my contact information. I can send to Sandy, or I'm sorry, I can send to Terry uh, a copy of my slides so that she can email out to you all so that you have, if you don't get my email right away, uh, you'll have it. But if you wanna get in contact, if you're having trouble getting in contact with someone in the, maybe in the um, art disciplines, reach out to me and then I will get you in contact with the correct person. Um, just to leave you with two things, uh, contact me with and staff for questions, obviously. And then just remember that we're always here to help you. We want you to succeed. So. Um, just thank you all for having me here today. And um, I'll turn it back over to Terry. Thank you so much. So this may be a review for some of you or many of you, but um, if it's new information, that is fabulous. So what does the Division of Cultural Affairs do? If you're already a grantee of ours, you probably have a pretty good idea of what we do. Um, we are Florida's legislatively mandated state's arts agency. And we actually were created in response to the beginnings of the NEA. Um, we report to the Secretary of State who serves as the Chief Cultural Officer. Um, and there's our Florida statute if you just wanna know all of that legal jar jargon. Um, our mission is to advance, support, and promote arts and culture and to strengthen the economy and quality of life for all Floridians. And of course, you know that we do grants. We have general program support, specific cultural projects, in areas of arts and education, underserved cultural community development, artists, and of course, um, the artistic disciplines. We have a cultural endowment program. We have cultural facilities grants. We also um, do some special partner projects, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, and we do professional development opportunities. We used to have a conference we haven't had that for a few years, but um, hopefully we'll be able to bring that back. Um, we fund public entities, Florida nonprofit tax, tax exempt organizations, arts and cultural organizations and individuals under the specific cultural project category. We fund artist projects and artists on tour. We allow one application per fiscal year to each program. Um, so if you apply for Fast Track, that happens twice a year and you don't get funded the first cycle, you can apply for the second cycle. General program support and specific cultural project, um, you need to pick one, you can apply for both. Um, and we have in cultural endowment is the application is once a year as well as cultural facilities. Generally our application cycles are April 1st through June 1st, except for fast track. Um, those have some different dates, which is on a, a slide that's coming up. All of our grants are applied for through a um, purpose built grant system called dosgrants.com and that's like a department of state grants.com and one thing that you may find interesting is that we share this system with all of the departments with or all of the divisions within the department of state so not only does the art agency use it but historical resources uses it the libraries use it elections uses it um so you may find some things that just seem a little bit odd for arts people and that's because we're trying to um, get all of those different entities to be able to use the same system so um, fun fact about our grant system and for those of you who have been with us for a while it is getting better every cycle 
um, we're, we're pretty proud of it right now. We've been doing a really good job with that. So I mentioned the fast track grants that had sort of a different cycle. Those are mini grants and they are for projects only. So not general program support. Your operating budget may not exceed $150,000 in order to apply. And the maximum award is $2,500. The match for our fast track grants are only 50%. So um, instead of one to one, it's 50% to one, and that can be cash or in kind. And these grants, the funds are faster to access. And there are two annual deadlines, as I mentioned. One is usually around March 1st and the other one is usually around September 1st. We do announce when those are actually happening. It just really depends on, on holidays and whether it falls on a weekend. Um, and then the grant periods are for six months. So if you apply in March, the funding actually becomes available that July 1st and it's for six months. If you apply in September, the funding becomes available January 1st and it's through June 30th. Our general program support and specific cultural project grants are kind of our, our bread and butter, if you will. We do change our guidelines annually. We do updates, um, see what isn't working, what is working really well, but we feel like we could beef it up. Um, what is going on in the world that we need to consider, how things are aligning with our strategic plan. So know that what you applied with this year may not necessarily be the same guidelines as next year. And um, so what I'm presenting today is, is sort of the, the application cycle that just closed and we just finished panels for. So um, GPS and SCP fund cultural organizations and cultural projects. It's a one-to-one -one match so if you ask for 50,000, you have to match it with 50,000. That match can be up to 25% in kind, unless you are in a ready county, which is rural economic development initiative county. And then your match is only 50%. The annual deadline, as I mentioned, is June 1st. And applications are due 13 months prior to the funding period, which can be a little tricky because not everybody um, plans that far and ahead. But for our grants, that is what we do because of the way the funding is um, proposed and approved. The funding period is July 1st through June 30th of the year after you apply. Applications are scored by a panel review process and all applications that receive 80 points or higher are recommended for funding. So we put all of the lists together and we create ranked lists for general program support and specific cultural projects. These lists are approved by our Florida Council on Arts and Culture and then the Secretary of State. And then we submit those lists to the Florida legislature as part of our legislative budget request. And so um, the legislature determines what they want to fund. And then that actually goes to the governor for approval. So not necessarily what they put in the budget gets approved. Um, as you know, this year, we did not receive funding for anything except for general program support. The funds are divided according to your score and based on the appropriation by the Florida legislature and the governor. <clears throat> In order to apply, you need to be either a public entity, a nonprofit tax exempt organization, or an individual solo artist or an unincorporated performing company. All grant activities must be open, accessible to all members of the public, regardless of gender, race, color, national origin, religion, disability, age, or marital status. All of your grant activities need to take place within the grant period. So that July 1st through June 30th of the year that the funding is available. And there are some categories that have additional requirements um, so always do read the guidelines so that you know um, what is specific to your case. So for general program support, you can request up to $150,000 for um, your general support operating. Um, and the funding is based on, the funding level is based on total operating income and we have three levels. 
which um, we can look at in, a, at, I think, the next slide. Your mission must be directly to conduct arts and cultural programming. Recurring cultural programs that exist within multi-purpose public or nonprofit institutions may be eligible for GPS, provided that you have um, a separate and itemized budget, you have an advisory or governing board, you have year round programming, not just like one thing that you do and you can separate, um, you can fully, you can separately fulfill the basic eligibility and discipline specific requirements. So basically um, an organization within an organization. And so um, these are the request amounts. Level one is um, $40,000 or 25% of your total operating income, whichever is less. And then for level two, it's 90,000 or 15%, whichever is less. Level three is 150,000 or 10%, whichever is less. And your request may not exceed more than $150,000. So that is our maximum request amount. We have three different types of general program support proposals. One is discipline-based, and you can see the different disciplines listed here. Uh, local arts agencies must be designated as the local arts agency by your county commission, and a state service organization must reach at least um, 40 counties. For specific cultural projects, the request is um, up to $25,000. And it's for a specific project, program, or exhibition, or series. And with specific cultural projects, a non-cultural organization can apply to do a cultural project. And under specific cultural project, we fund individual artists. So under specific cultural projects, we also have arts and education category, discipline-based with all of the disciplines represented the underserved cultural community development, which assists with um, capacity building, hiring a consultant and salary assistance. And then, as I mentioned, the individual artist. And in order to get funding for an individual artist, you have to provide public benefit through the creation of new work. So uh, creation or presentation of new artistic work. The review criteria for both um, are is currently divided into four categories, excellence, impact, management, and accessibility. And you must receive a score of 80 or higher in order to be considered for funding. Cultural facilities is the program that I manage. So this is the one that I know absolutely the most about. Um, this is the, the big money, if you will. It funds renovation, new construction, or acquisition of cultural facilities. The mission must be directly to conduct arts and culture, and the facility has to be used for arts and cultural purposes 85% of the time. It's not intended for landscaping or constructing or con uh, fabricate, fabricating exhibits that are temporary, um, and also parking lots, unless the parking lot is part of a larger project. Um, the request is up to $500,000. The application deadline, um, actually, so it's the same as GPS SEP. Applications open April 1st. Deadline is June 1st. And these are scored by panel as well. The panel for cultural facilities is the Florida Council on Arts and Culture. There is a match requirement for cultural facilities. If your budget is less than a million dollars, it's a one-to-one -one match. No matter what your budget is, if you are in a rural economic, economic development initiative, county or community, it is also one-to-one. -one. And then um, if you're just in a, a regular county and your budget is more than a million, it's a two-to-one match. You have to have 25% of cash on hand, which means in the bank to show us that you have 25% of that match available at the time of application. The rest can be in irrevocable pledges, and then you can have 25% um, uh, in kind, but you need to be able to document that. So the person that's donating their time would basically write an invoice for their time. We have three categories under which the um, applications are looked at. Need for project and the project impact, scope of work, and then the budget and matching funds. 
And then I mentioned the special partner projects. So these are projects um, that align with the goals and the strategic plan for the division. And this is money that we actually fund with, the, with money that we get from the National Endowment for the Arts. And our strategic issues with our current plan, a strategic plan is working better together, visibility and awareness and diversity, equity and inclusion. So these are the things that we're looking for. And if you have an idea for a project, contact me. Um, that's, that's how we get these projects. We, we talk to people that are current grantees that we know are doing good things. They bring a project to us and then um, there is an application and it's also um, reviewed by a panel, um, but it's sort of those bigger sort of pet projects, if you will. And previous projects have included arts and healthcare, arts in the military, rural initiatives, and also diversity, equity, and inclusion. So I just wanted to give you a brief Florida CARES update. Josh did a really great job of talking about the NEA and all the money that they distributed. Of the money that the NEA uh, received from the CARES Act, Florida received $602,800 and we distributed that among 314 organizations. The awards ranged from $1,000 to 2,103. And I can tell you that as of this morning, all of them have been paid except for 11. <laughs> and those 11 were supposed to have been paid yesterday. So financial services working on it. If you haven't gotten your payment yet, it's coming, we promise. Um, the funding was used for salary support, either full or partial for one or more positions, and also facility costs such as rent and utilities. And so um, it wasn't a whole lot of money, but we really wanted to do um, what we could for as many organizations. And um, we hope that it was helpful in some way. I believe that might be my last slide. It is. Um, this is our website. On our website, we have all of our guidelines, the program contacts. If you don't know who you should speak to specifically, you can just contact me. I'm always um, available to help and I can pass you along to the appropriate person. Um, and that is, maybe I can stop sharing. Oh, it says stop share, there you go. Um, so that's <laughs> it for my presentation. Um, I know it's a lot in a little bit of time, but we wanted to make sure that people had um, time to ask questions. Um, so I am going to actually open it up to the floor. And if anyone has any questions or other questions in the chat, Josh and um, Hannah and I can try and answer them. Hi there, I have a question. I'm <laughs> with the Orlando Repertory Theater in beautiful Orlando, Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, question for you, Josh, if you could review uh, for the, the arts projects grants for the NEA, what sort of timeline that looks like and what specifics need to be locked down, how far in advance in our own season planning in order to really take advantage of those application opportunities? As far as the, um, sorry, as far as the uh, art disciplines or well, my understanding is that um, the application often includes things like work samples. So you, in your own organization's planning, you need to know the musicians that you're going to be hiring or the director that you're going to have for your show or the actor who's going to be in this play that you'll need to have some of these specifics locked down to help support the grant. But knowing that the application is due so far in advance, if you could just give us an overview of, we have to know this by then so we can apply by then and then the grant period is this. <laughs> Um, that's an excellent question. Um, Hannah, I, I feel like it would be, it's a poor, a, a partial. So it's kind of like also with the, um, with the one-to-one -one non federal cost match, you don't have to have that up front at, when you're applying for the grant, but you have to just be able to show it. So as far as applying for a grant for a, a a play or an opera or something like that, uh, musical theater, you would um, give us the, the uh, hopes of who you're gonna be hiring and 
what company they come from and that, that, that sort of thing. Um, is that helpful or did that not help at all? <laughs> no, no, that's helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. And then again, if you have any more questions, uh, please follow up with me and I will help you out um, and get you the right answers if I didn't answer it. Hi, um, this is uh, Jenny Person at Live Arts Miami in, of course, Miami. Um, uh, I think I might have missed a little bit when you were talking, Josh, when you were talking about the timeline. Um, I sort of have two questions. One is uh, when the grants are at panel and when they're approved. And I forgot when we'll know about what's currently at panel now. And the other part of that question is, is COVID affecting the timeline in any way? So as far as COVID, it's not affecting um, our normal daily routine. Uh, we had obviously the CARES Act fund that we worked very hard to get out the door and that was a one and done situation. And then the um, staff went right into their normal business day. And um, so grants should be announced. Um, we have a, our council meeting in October, at the end of October, and that's when they'll vote um, or they'll approve these um, grants. And then I think if I'm correct, uh, Hannah, I think it's November is when they start going out as far as like being um, made aware if you've received a grant. I think it's November. Yeah, that is correct. Does that answer both of your questions? I, I hope I did. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome. It's, yeah, amazing COVID... that, it's amazing that COVID hasn't affected the timeline. Well, yeah, I, that's what I was just going to say. I'm like, COVID's destroyed basically our lives, and um, but it hasn't stopped us at the agency to to continue on with the uh, the work that we do on a daily basis. We everyone's working from home and. Um, we have team meetings either on the phone or we have team meetings um, via Zoom. But yeah, no, the staff is working really, really hard to do everything that they do on a daily basis. Amazing. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So Josh, we have a question from the chat. Uh, Robin asks, what type of funding do both organizations anticipate having to distribute as grants in the next year or two? I was wondering how COVID is impacting these pools of money. So I think that's half for you and half for Terry. <laughs> well, COVID, as far as us, is not affecting our grant cycle. Um, we obviously go on a budget that is um, voted on and approved by Congress. And then obviously the budget is signed off by the president. So we, we sit and wait for our budget to come out and um, then the money for the different um, uh, disciplines and projects that we do grants for um, is uh, distributed out when the grants are approved. I think that's part, and then I don't know if the other part is for you, uh, Terry, or? It, it, it is for me, but my answer is essentially the same. So we don't have any way of knowing in advance what that funding is going to look like. Um, we submit our ranked lists to the legislature and they sit down. So the, the House creates a budget, this, um, the Senate creates a budget and then they come together and they make compromises and then they submit that to the governor. So. We, we don't know, but do keep in mind that tax revenues have been low and um, there have been other, some other repercussions because of, of closings and things like that. So um, we don't know, but we're going to be cautiously optimistic this year. <laughs> but that, I mean, that's all we can do. We, do. we just have no idea what the level funding is going to be like. Yeah, us too. Um, uh, I was just going to say that's why... Um, we find it so important to keep in touch with us so that while we're working and hoping for Congress to give us as much money as we possibly can get, that we can <laughs> give out to you all, um, that money is your tax dollars. And that's why we are so um, diligent on 
again, access to the arts and access to our agency. Our agency's there to help you, to help you get through the application process because we want your money basically to go back into your pockets. We pay taxes and that's what it's, that's what that money's coming from. So it's basically, we just want to get your money back into your pocket, <laughs> into your organization's <laughs> pocket. <laughs> Great. So um, I think that sort of leads into Sue Ellen's question. Um, she says that 40% of funding goes out to the organizations. Um, where does the other 60% go? Um, so I think she has it a little backwards, correct, Josh? Well, so 40% of our budget, yearly budget, um, goes directly to the states and regions. Um, and then that leaves us with 60% of the budget and from that, um, it goes to direct grants. That's for our grant projects. Um, the arts disciplines that I just explained earlier and our town grants, research grants. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, obviously a portion of it is used for salaries, but 60% goes to direct grants. Great, and then Jerry asked, what average percentage of new organizations receive funding in a given year? Whoa, that's a question I, I personally don't know. Um, I would like to answer that question, but I don't have the answer at this moment. So if you don't mind emailing me that question, I would, I would like to try to get that answer. I just, I want to say that um, obviously, so we, like I said earlier, we, we um, give grants to large and small uh, projects and new and existing projects, but we're, we're really trying to target rural areas that don't typically um, sign up and apply for grants. Um, Cause we want to, we, we want to try to get at least one grant in each of the 435 congressional districts. That's our, our main priority, or one of our main priorities. But um, I don't know the exact number of new organizations that have applied that get granted. So I would like to answer that for you if you don't mind reaching back out to me. All right, and then Catherine has a question. If an organization is wonder, uh, is considering a new cultural facility, would they apply for National Endowment for the Arts funding to support design and then state funding for construction? I think that's correct. You would, we can't, obviously we can't um, give funding for the construction or purchase of a building or a facility, but we can do the design portion of it. And I think I remember hearing Terry uh, talk about how they all, they can um, support fund give funding for the actual construction. And we do construction and not design, so that works out well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I saw another one. We have um, Maria asks. In order to apply, uh, the organization is required to have been registered for three years minimum. Is that correct? Yes, you have to be a 501c3. You have to have a three-year art programming history to be available to be um, uh, to be eligible. I'm sorry, I was going to say to be available, but to be eligible to apply for a grant. So yeah. Um, you must have a three year art programming history. Um, and then Sue Ellen asks, since 40% of your budget goes out to the regions, do we apply for that funding through the National Endowment for the Arts or is there somewhere else to access those funds? So the 40% of our budget, or yeah, of our budget goes to the states and regions. So that would go to, um, I believe you, Terry, that money goes to you guys. So then yes. they would apply through the state and the region. The state and the region. So South Arts does have um, a grant granting programs that they do using NEA funds. Our NEA funds are used for salaries, 
Um, some programs that aren't grants are fast track grants and then the uh, special projects that I mentioned. Yeah, so it's 40% of the federal budget goes to states and regions. And then if you want money from that 40%, you would go to the states and regions and apply for grants. Um, if you want 60% of our budget, that's from the federal government. That would be our, our art disciplines and our town grants, that kind of thing. Um, and Jerry asked, does that mean that this year's funding um, should have helped cover SPG? I think he means specific cultural projects, maybe? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, so, That's what he means. <laughs> oh, yeah, he wrote, yes. yes. So, so he's yeah. asking if the endowments funding helped cover you know, the, the specific Chris. cultural projects that were not funded by the, the governor and the legislature. Um, no, we actually. Um, there are two pots of money, and so the way the statutes and the rules are written, that funding actually cannot be used to fund GPS or SEP. Um, it only funds those things that um, we've put in our application to the National Endowment for the Arts. And then Robin asks, what is the Southeast region agency that we can apply to? Robin, I'm gonna send you a link to the South Arts uh, Regional Arts Organization where they also have grant opportunities. So I'm gonna send you that link in the chat box. Thank you, Hannah. And I have another question coming through. Okay, um, Sharo asks, Edge Zones has applied uh, for years and never received any grants from the National Endowment for the Arts. Uh, we've been around since 2004 and have been getting grants from the state's foundations and city, but never make it with the NEA. What do you suggest we do to get funded? Well, I know you're probably not going to hear this, but keep fighting the fight and keep applying, but I know it gets exhausting after so many times that you um, you apply and you don't get um, uh, the grant. But um, have you, I just wanna see if you've reached out to any of our staff members, have you gone on to our website to see sample applications um, that were granted grants th through our arts organization or arts endowment. Um, those are first steps, I guess, that would go into uh, what a great and good application looks like. Um, those will be the first steps that I would say, but most importantly is contacting staff um, and asking them for help throughout the process. It doesn't matter if you are going line by line on the application, they're there to help you and they want to help you. Does that, does that help you a little bit? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. It, it does, yes. And I wanna say I like your glasses a lot. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Um, all right. So does anyone have questions not in the chat box that they wanted to say in person? Okay, does anybody have any other questions that I maybe missed in the chat box? Feel free to post them again. Um, Marie Carmen, I do see yours. So I'm going to send you a link to the guide, um, which lists the specific staff that would be in your field or your discipline. Yeah. To me, that's like the Bible. That guide is kind of like the Bible. And um, I'm not sure when the 2021 guide will come out, but they it really doesn't change that those contacts basically. It's basically the same staff that has been there for a few years. So to me, that's um, 
very important information, even though it's little information, but it's very important for us to, um, to help you. And thank you, Hannah, for sending that link. Yeah. Uh, Pam asks, are there any grants for collection support planning or management? We have an art collection and need professional archivist support and funding for salary and execution. Ooh. So um, after museum and visual arts department will likely be able to provide grant funding on some parts of those. Although generally salary is not covered for National Endowment for the Arts grants. So we would be able to help you potentially with design, execution, um, the uh, indemnity of any collections you might need. Uh, but unfortunately, salary would not come from our grants. And DCA's um, funding can be used for salaries. Um, it would just sort of be up to you when you're doing your budget um, to, to assign that funding to, to that person or persons who would be doing that project. Um, but we don't have anything specific to collections um, support and management. Um, and then Tony asks, is there any grants between artists project and arts organizations. Um, Tony, do you mind expounding on that a little, please? I don't know that I understand. Yeah, question. well, the question is, uh, I have a cultural project and uh, as an artist, I'm uh, collaborating with a nonprofit art organization. Is there something for that that we can both apply or one of us apply for that? I, Hannah, do you... <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, do you want me to? Um, yeah. Yeah, your arts organization um, that you're just holding would apply for a grant under the appropriate discipline. Um, and that grant would sort of include you as a partner um, to help fund the project. Uh, so that does include partnering with you and sourcing materials, et cetera. Sounds good. Uh, Thanks, Tony. Thanks. Asks a similar question, but for a digital archival system, would grant funding be able to support a new archival system rather than this? Um, that's a great question, Melissa. I believe our media arts helps fund digital archival projects. Um, I don't know the extent, but email Josh and he can get you in contact with our media arts yeah. Uh, contacts who would love to talk to you about digital archival systems because we are really making a push to focus on archiving important arts projects and histories. Um, Albert has a question for you, Terry. Albert asks, how early in a cultural facilities project should I apply? Actually, the, the, the um, question is for both Terry and Josh because of the art town as well. Oh. Uh, we are um, um, getting ready to uh, try to build the first performing arts center in St. Augustine, Florida. Um, and uh, we have formed a, an organization, a nonprofit with uh, a dozen other arts organizations as members. Um, and we're about to raise millions and millions of dollars to do this project. Um, but we're just getting started. Um, we don't even have a place. We have some architectural help. Um, uh, we, we anticipate being able to start raising money significantly within the next year. Um, and we expect to be able to build this thing within five years. Great. When, uh, I know it's ambitious, but um, when um, do you think we should be applying for those two types of grants. Um, is it too early yet for us to get there? Do we need to have uh, some kind of record um, to work with? Or what do we need to consider? Um, 
So, okay, so for one, the um, our town grants are, um, their deadline is in August of each year. I don't know if I said that earlier. I'm sorry if I did not, um, but their deadline is in August of each year. Um, you have, must be partnered up with a local government agency um, entity um, and your with your organization. So if you've got that all matched up and you're a 501c3, I think you're you're set to go and you can start applying for our, our town grants. Uh, just um, expanding on that, um, the National Endowment for the Arts, there is a place in the grant applications to let um, us know the other grants or financial sources you're anticipating so that you've applied for. Um, and if your grant is um, awarded, what they'll do is they'll chat with you about those other grants you got and work that you work you work your way through that one to one match. So anticipated funds, there is a location for that. Great. That helped. <laughs> yeah. So so in, in a nutshell, um, we don't have to have a three year history of existence to apply for our town. Um, that's a good question. Um, Only existed for two years. Two years. By next year, we may have three years under our belt. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just looking through my notes here, and I don't see anything that says three-year art programming. Um, I can't exactly answer that for you. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. We won't be applying until next August, obviously. Um, okay. So then by then, you'll be three years. <laughs> we'll be close to three years by then, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Terry, what about? We don't have any requirement like that. Brand new organizations can apply to cultural facilities for funding. Um, you, you'll just need to be ready to sort of start working on your project when that grant funding becomes available. Great, super. Good news, thank you. Great, so I'll uh, maybe put out one more call for questions and then I know we've gone a little bit over time. So to be respectful for everyone, we'll maybe take one more question if it pops up and otherwise we'll have you uh, shoot any other questions off to uh, Josh or Terry or both and we'll make sure we get back um, to you as soon as we can with that information. So one more call for questions. All right, and I think we're good. So I'll pass it back to Josh, who will probably pass it back to Terry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you, Terry, for having us. And this was a, I, I hope, I hope a helpful, informative um, session where we can um, discuss like the future of the arts and the arts um, culture. And um, I'll send to you, Terry. Uh, copy of my slides and that will have my information on there. So if anybody didn't get their question answered or didn't want to ask it right now and wants just to do it privately, please reach out to me and we'll, we'll get it for you. So I just hope that everybody has stay safe and, and healthy and their families are staying healthy and safe and, um, and hopefully we're back at it very, very soon. Great, thank you, Josh. Um, for those of you who joined late, um, they will be uh, providing a recording of this um, town hall. And so we will find a way to share it with you. And um, I will share the slides through your program managers, um, which is probably how you found out about this. If you don't have a program manager because you're new to the Division of Cultural Affairs, um, just contact me directly and I can share the slides um, from both Josh's presentation and myself. Um, and I, I echo Josh's sentiments, please stay safe. Um, if you have any issues, feel free to reach out to us at any time. We are getting very, very good at troubleshooting. <laughs> so <laughs> we're here for you and we're so very proud of everyone for staying busy and keeping on with the good fight. Um, just, you know, let us know if we can help you in any way. Go ahead. All right.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks. Take care.